right so let's begin so as i said the first um, topic we'll be dealing with today is determining the synchronous generator parameters now last week we saw that um, the equivalent circuit for a single phase or a three phase uh, synchronous generator looks like that uh, for sim uh, to make it simpler instead of having the three um, generator or rather the three amateur windings uh, we will only use one set so we'll be using this is a per phase uh, equivalent circuit <clears throat> and it's the circuit we'll be using throughout um, the discussion today so as we had said last time the three phase synchronous generator consists of the field uh, windings or the field um, part of the motor mounted on the rotor and the armature which is uh, on this side so we have stator and rotor all right uh, rotor is supplied with a dc field current um, which determines how much flux will be available within the stator uh, as the dc or the rotor windings are rotated within um, the space of the motor you will then find that the uh, an induced emf will be induced on the stator side in all three windings remember this is a per phase so each of these windings um, or rather this will be uh, there will be three of these windings within the stator so the induced emf within the stator um, is determined by those uh, parameters that we saw k is the construction of the motor itself or the construction of the windings amateur windings phi is the flux uh, the magnetic field and omega is the speed at which the rotor is rotated <coughs> so phi as we had said is directly proportional to the field um, current that is applied which is why we have the adjustments um, the adjuster resistor that is on the rotor on the field exciter right say stroke exciter okay <clears throat> so now on the field exciter we know um, the parameters that are there so we know how much voltage we are putting in we know how much current we can put in this would be very easily done by having an ammeter uh, connected to the supply for this rotor or exciter so it is quite straightforward to measure that um, for the side of the stator you would then have um, various elements that you need to determine so we would want to determine um, the induced voltage you'd want to determine the synchronous reactance and you also want to determine your armature resistance right <clears throat> In the case of the induced voltage, you already know um, the speed at which the motor is being run, but you don't necessarily know the flux. But uh, to some extent, you can determine how much the flux is because flux is directly proportional to the field current. So in this case, um, you will then have uh, three things that we want to determine, right? So number one is um, relationship between a field current and induced voltage. Number two, you will then have synchronous reactance, which is XS. And number three, the third element, you will have amateur resistance right just admit some people okay amateur resistance so the amateur resistance straight away um, is the most straightforward to uh, determine 
in that when you have your armature resistance if you have uh, your three windings say for example let's take your armature uh, windings as indicated like that let's say they are connected in star you have your r y and b windings in order for you to determine the armature resistance the armature resistance is simply the resistance of the coils or the windings that are used to make up uh, the alternator or the armature so that would be very simple in that you would simply connect um, two of them in a star configuration and you would assume that is ra that is ra and if you know if you have a voltage supply if you know the current that is flowing through and the voltage that you have supplied it would be fairly straightforward to say that uh, 2ra because you have connected two of them together is equal to voltage over the current whatever voltage you put in as a test voltage will give you the current that you can measure using say an ammeter if you add it inside there yeah and that would be able to give you the values of the windings usually because machines are designed to be balanced it is safe to assume that ra will be the same for all three sets of windings so any two of them would give you a good average armature resistance so that is pretty straightforward straight away you can determine whatever is here in this circuit so that's parameter number one we still need ea and we still need xs all right the reason why we don't need terminal voltage and the armature current these are externally measurable from the machine these are connected to the outside world here we are looking for parameters that we do not directly have access to because they are inside the machine right and xs as we said synchronous reactance is dependent on the operation of the machine how the machine is uh, running so let's start with the relationship between field current if and magnetic flux pi so in the case of the three phase um, synchronous generator you will have um let me let somebody in you will have a relationship that looks like that all right remember your vt here is your terminal voltage as measured on the outside all right here it is indicated v5 but it can also be called vt okay that is your terminal voltage measured from the outside and we want to see what is the relationship of that terminal voltage to uh, the field current or the exciter current that we are applying this dc current that we are putting here What's the relationship between the two? Now, remember, this can be found in that Vt is equal to Ea plus, uh, sorry, minus um, Jiaxs and minus J, uh, not J, minus Iara, right? So, to some extent, Vt and Ea have a relationship with each other barring the effects of these ones so there's a direct relationship between the two but we also know that of course ea is equal to k phi omega and in turn we know that phi is pro uh, phi is proportional to if so phi leads us to uh, the, the Field current leads us to phi, which leads us to Ea, which leads us to Vt, which means that this relationship here is very similar to the relationship we saw in the last lecture between the induced uh, voltage or the magnetic flux that is created and the field current that we have, right? So as the field current increases, you see there's a linear relationship up to a certain point. Let's call it that point, okay? beyond that point you can see that it tends to now it deviates from the straight line this is because of of course the effects of saturation at some point there is a maximum amount of current that you can or there's a maximum amount of magnetic flux that you can induce within the windings of the stator so any increase in the field current 
on the rotor side or on the exciter has a limited increase in the amount of magnetic flux that we are creating within the stator. So the usable or the straight line relationship ends at a certain point here. Okay. So now those are the relationships between the two of them. Now in order to test or in order to determine and to obtain this characteristic within uh, test parameters, we would disconnect all loads from the motor. That's number one. Yeah, so that means in order to determine this, this is a no load test. So that's number one. You're running the motor free of any loads. Number two, you would run, uh, sorry, you're running the generator, not the motor, the generator. You would run it at rated speed. So the speed that you would normally um, run it, uh, usually if it is for main supply, whatever speed would give you 50 hertz is what you run uh, the connector at. And then it would simply be a case of um, gradually increasing increasing IF starting at zero from zero amps, right? So you would be having your mod, your generator, no load is connected across, it is open, the windings are just open circuit, there's no load there, but you can measure the terminal voltage even though there's no load, there's a voltage that would appear. On the exciter side, you would start with a zero IF, and then you would gradually increase it and see the interaction and you measure the value of the VT or the terminal voltage across the terminals themselves, right? Starting from zero with the um, field current, zero, all the way to whatever maximum you would see uh, at which point you start seeing it deviating like that. So that's the first test, and that would enable us to determine the relationship between IF and the terminal voltage, right? And this is what we call the open circuit characteristic. Of course, it is open circuit because, as we've said, there are no loads being connected to the terminals. Yeah, it is just an open circuit. Okay. So that's the first relationship that we have seen. We don't have any numbers yet, but we already know how the relationship between the terminal voltage and the uh, field are operating. If we were able to get the synchronous reactance and the um, armature resistance, we can be able to obtain the induced uh, voltage, right? So let's try and obtain now the synchronous reactance. So in order for us now to determine synchronous reactance, we do what is called the short circuit test. So this is short circuit test, right? Of course, that would imply that the terminals are short circuited to each other. On this side, you have uh, all the terminals short circuited so that any current that flows through is only flowing through the internal impedances, the synchronous reactance and the armature resistance. Short circuit to those. Once again, we set um, increase or gradually, sorry, gradually increase current from zero to an acceptable maximum rated uh, current and that would give you a characteristic that looks like this right so you have on this axis your field current which you start at zero and you go increasing until you reach a maximum or rated current on this axis we are measuring the amateur current the current that is flowing uh, through the windings of the stator yeah so instead of connecting or rather as you short circuit the terminals you would be able to connect an 
armature that would uh, be able to measure the value of your armature current yeah you connect an ammeter that connect that uh, that measures the value of the armature current okay so now we have an open circuit characteristic and we have a short circuit characteristic so how do these help us uh, to obtain the values that we are talking about now when we look at the equivalent circuit we know that our terminal voltage let's call it v5 is equals to internal generated uh, voltage minus j excess i a minus r a i a if we rearrange that slightly you get right so you have your voltage and your impedances now in short circuit conditions such as this one right terminal voltage here will be zero okay so this is during short Conditions VT equals zero, right? So that means zero is equal to EA minus IA RA plus J XS. If we look at that further, we will realize that EA is equal to I A. R A plus J X S and we rearrange that in order to get R A plus J X S is equal to E A over I A. Okay. So this in turn can be able to give us the value, yeah, because we know what the current would be. Yeah, we know what R A was. And you would therefore be able to see what our synchronous impedance is. Okay, whatever voltage is induced, whatever EA is, you would be able to determine the value of the excess that is inside there. Okay, so that would end up giving us uh, a list of voltages that we can make use of in order to determine the synchronous reactance. So, so we have got the relationship there, we've got a synchronous reactance. And when we combine all three of them together, you can be able to see if we make use of the open circuit characteristic and the short circuit characteristic, superimpose all of them. Yeah, Superimpose all of them together so that you have your IF on the x-axis and you have a series of points which you can take at a specific value of if you have a value for uh, amateur current in the short circuit condition and you have a value for terminal voltage in the open circuit condition if you take those two together you would be able therefore to determine your uh, impedance ra plus jxs Ra plus Jxs, which will be given by Vt here over Ia here at a specific given value of If or at a given excitation under certain conditions. Remember that if you hold the If constant, your internal induced voltage Ea will be the same in both cases. Yeah. But because the two loads are different, that would be able to give you the two loads, be, meaning you have open circuit or you have short circuit. Short circuit is, you know, you're only looking at the internal uh, loads. The only load that you have is the internal um, impedances. So that would be able to give us this relationship. And remember, we already found the amateur 
resistance. So that is known. Vt at a given value of IF is known. IA at a given value of IF is known from the short circuit. This is from the open circuit. So therefore you are able to determine the last component which is JXS. All right. So you have your components now all being um, able to be determined from your parameters. So using those three tests, you have the um, DC resistance, which is here, which we used similar to the way we would determine the resistance of any windings of any electrical machine. You have the open circuit characteristic, that is the no load uh, test. And you have the short circuit characteristic when you short circuit the machine. Using all of those, we are then able to determine in turn the resistance and the synchronous reaction uh, reactants. Bear in mind, synchronous reactance is only valid at this particular point. Okay, it is this line that is here, not uh, not a point. Sorry, at this particular range. Beyond the saturation point, your value of synchronous reactance now changes. You can see it here, right? So it is only this method is only usable in that um, range. But generally, you would use your machine, you would use your generator within that range. Questions so far? So let's look at that. Let's look at, let's say you have an unknown machine. Yeah, it's a 200 kVA, 480 volt, 50 hertz, star connected synchronous generator. Rated field current is given as that. And you carry out a series of tests, the three, three tests we've talked about, open circuit, short circuit, and then when you apply a DC voltage across the two terminals, the three tests that we uh, talked about. What are the values of amateur re resistance and approximate synchronous react reactance in ohms uh, that would be used in the generator model? So the generator model is what we have here. Okay, so first of all, let's do our... A resistance test. So resistance test is the way we had said. 2RA is equal to VDC over IDC, which gives us RA is equal to VDC over to I D C. Let's bring out the calculator. So what's our V D C? It's ten volts. So R A ten volts over two times. Current is 25 amps, so 25. So 0, 0 0.2 ohms, right? So that's your first value, RA. Then let's look at some other uh, valuable measures, okay? One of the ones we would want to look at is uh, internal generated voltage. So in this case, the internal generated voltage is equal to the terminal voltage in open circuit conditions, right? So here we have our open circuit conditions, okay? Right, at terminal voltage, in open circuit, it will be 540. But remember, we are doing a per phase model, so we'll do a bit of uh, conversion. So EA is equal to 540 over root 3, which is 311.77. 
outputs. Okay. Then now we look at uh, short circuit conditions. So short circuit conditions. In the short circuit condition, we can get our IA. So IA, amateur current in short circuit, is the same as the load current when we have short circuit conditions, which is given by 300 amps, yeah, which was listed here. Right. At the rated IF, we have 300 amps. So now how do we combine all those together in order to get our synchronous reactance, which is the last parameter that we are looking for. Okay, So we said that RA plus JXS is equal to uh, EA over IA. EA over IA. Remember, EA was being found from terminal voltage in open circuit conditions, which is uh, there, right? That one here. So, we already have a number of these. Um, to make it simpler, let's do <clears throat> the magnitudes. So, we will take it as, um, if we square both sides, then find the square root of the same we'll be able to get square root of RA plus JXS squared is equal to 311.77 over 300, which is the same as our RA was 0 0.2 squared plus XS squared is equal to 3. One point zero three nine two. Okay. Um, let's square both sides so that you have zero point two squared plus xs squared is equal to one point three nine two three squared, which is one one point zero eight. So xs is equal to the square root of one point zero eight minus 0 0.2 squared is 0 0.04. Okay. Therefore, xs is equal to 1.08 minus 0 0.04 is equal to that. Square root of that is equal to 1. Point zero, let's call it two. Okay, so in essence, we have determined the circuit parameters of this um, machine. So EA is three hundred and eleven point seven seven volts. Volts. RA is zero point two ohms. And the XS, which we have just found, is 1.02 ohms. All right. So those are um, the determining parameters, and we have been able, therefore, to establish through a simple series of tests how we can determine the two of them. Okay. Now, one thing about uh, synchronous reactants, because it is so much larger, then the RA, yeah, 1.02 compared to 0 0.2. In fact, when we are adding them here or when we are subtracting here, you can see that the difference is very, very small. So, for example, if you take the square root of 1.08, square root of 1.08, which is this, yeah, you just take this value by itself, you get a figure that is fairly uh, close to what we are talking about. Okay, it is just um, near enough. So it can be used to get an approximate value. So what you would determine is if you want an approximate, approximate value of XS, you could take 
V as as not we can see it will take E A over I A. Yeah. The in terms of calculations, the value of R A will not make too much difference when you're determining the value of the synchronous reactants. Although it may be necessary during other types of calculations. Okay. So that's that on the um, determining of circuit parameters or finding the equivalent circuit of our uh, synchronous generator.